welcome links here and this is more of crystallite because apparently we have to check out more temples and find out uh, if we can cast magic or not uh, open the rift to go back home etc etc it's a crazy story um <clears throat> anyway welcome Crystalline. Let's continue. Light filters through a window and gently pulls me out of my slumber. Slowly I push myself up in the bed and glance over to see Zack strapping on his discharger dischargers. He notices me sit up. Hey. Hi. We're meeting downstairs in a few minutes. All right. As Zack finishes gathering his things, I begin to get ready to go downstairs. The group gathers down the lobby. I greet everyone and turn to Amelia. Hey, how was your child with Elder Ism yesterday? We had a very productive discussion. In fact, Elder Ism shared more of his journals with me. Hmm. She indicates the scrolls in her arms. Whoa, wait, he just gave you those? No. These are copies I wrote to bring back with me to the academy. Uh, we stare at Amelia. She spent all the night writing those? Clearly a student. They are capable of doing that. I also preferred making notes by hand, to be fair. That's a lot of dedication. Amelia continues. Regardless, we discussed more on the theory of temporal rifts and the elementals. Which has only strengthened my concern that we do not have enough energy. Then that definitely means we need to seek out another temple. Let's go on an adventure! Do we have a lead on where to go? Elderism, through his research into the elements, did mention that historically, the Gaians, the people who originally the go. elemental, used to reside in the central woodlands of Assyria. The Kali. The people who worshipped the wind elemental resided in the northern aerial plains. Uh. Therefore, it is most logical that the earth and wind temple will be located in those respective regions. What about water? What about the... <laughs> oh, of course, I predict what the MC would say. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so... What about the water and sh or shadow temple? I was not about to ask about Shadow, to be honest, though. She shakes her head. The Aquarians, those who worshipped the water elemental, depended heavily on the seas. As such, Elder Ism was unable to pinpoint where the cultural hub of their society might have been. Okay. As for Shadow, that is a complete unknown. Wow, th this definitely, this one uh, line was recorded, you know, like... Oh, Different, uh, different, 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 different characteristics of the back room or whatever. Anyway. <clears throat> if the Earth Temple is somewhere centrally located, then that would be the temple closest to us. Hmm. Liana notes. The fastest way back will be to take the Crystal Rail, so we should return to Bazada. With our next course of action in place, we finish up at the inn and get ready to depart. Elder Isim sees us off, much to the delight of Amelia. We retreat back through the forest. <laughs> forest of the sorrow! Liana stays by my side the whole way through, still unsettled by the forest. Luckily, nothing unfavorable happens and we quickly make it through. Luckily? Luckily? As we return to Bazida, I can hear the raucous sounds of the marketplace city long before I see it. We pass through the familiar city gates and return to the early bustle of the city. Let's pause here and take a moment to restock. There are a few items I'd like to pick up which may be helpful. Good idea. Why don't we all make sure we have everything we need and then meet at the Crystal Rail Station? Okay. We all agree and split up. I spent some time browsing through the stalls again. Afterwards, I head over to the station to meet back up with the group. I'm the first to arrive at the station, but Kara shows up only a few minutes later. 
As the rest of the team gradually trickles in, Kara appears at the station list. The end of the line is Stonecrest, so that's where we should go. Once we arrive there, I'll scout around and find our next course of action. We want to reach as close to Central as possible, so traveling to the end of the Crystal Rail is a good first step. Mm. Once we had assembled some plans put together, we purchased our tickets. After turning pulls into the station, we all board and begin our journey. After traveling on a train for two days, we finally arrive in the city. I wonder if um, it was the same maneuver with Pango on the train. I squint at the midday sun and join the others as we quickly disembark the train, grateful for a chance to stretch our legs. Here we are, Stonecrest. <laughs> the palms again. Her smile is also so good. Kara pulls her arms overhead in a stretch, forcing her chest out. <sighs> Zack's eyes are immensely drawn to her, and so are mine. She smirks at Zack, who quickly averts her gaze, his gaze, and stares hard at a random cobble on the street. The town doesn't differ much from the other towns we've seen so far. It is made up of the same stone buildings and cobblestone paths. People wander in and out of the shops, going about their daily lives. <sighs> Zack, I understand you, man. The first thing we do is find and enter the inn. Oh, alright, so now that we're here, how do we figure out where to go next? Kara Grint. Just leave it to me. I'll ask around and see if I can come up with anything. Okay! I'll keep my eyes and ears open just in case I hear something too. Okay! Kara shakes her head. You should relax and enjoy the city. I've got some contacts I'm going to reach out to, so I've got this. I've got this! Oh, well, if you're sure. She's so reliable. Kara notes. I already have a few ideas and leads based on some of my previous scoutings for temples and hidden relics. Mm. Okay, then let's meet back here in a few hours to regroup. Hmm. Works for me. Hmm. Now that we have something of a plan. Oh, I mean the unknown. <laughs> I didn't read this for some reason. I mean, the notes distractedly. Uh... Me too. Kara and Liana leave while everyone else stirs. I don't have anything pressing to do. I wonder if I can help or hang out with someone. Go find Liana. Look for Emilia. I bet Zaki is at the inn. Let's find Kara. Ugh. I'm ready. Call it. Call it. You know, if this game was a multi-path romance option, I would go after Kara. I'm not even going to uh, pretend I wouldn't, but... But yeah, it's not that. And we are going after Liana. Listen, Liana is awesome as well, okay? It's not like I don't like her. On the other hand, knowing me, I'd probably still go after Liana if there was multiple romance options, because uh, as you may or may not, know, I, as you may or may not know, I usually also go uh, kind of in order we met, we meet people, something like that. Kara seems to already have an idea of where she wants to go. Maybe I can hang out with Liana. I check the surrounding streets and come upon a stadium. Liana stands right before it. Hey. She smiles as I approach. Hey. I look back at the statue of a woman. She stands in a regal pose overlooking the town square. She decked out in armor. She's decked out in armor with a sword hanging by her side. Where is that statue? I see a statue of the bird. What's that? I mean, who's that? That is Elena Vale. She was a mage knight who fought to protect her city against the advancement of Void. Ah. Lens, I spark with admiration as she looks at the statue. She tucks a lock, a lock of her hair behind her ear. That's pretty cool. I'm guessing she's from here. Liana notes. She was still studying at the academy to become a mage knight, but 
happens to be home when Void attacked. They didn't have the same type of training regimen in place back then as we do now. Normal townsfolk weren't trained or prepared to fight in a battle, and it was absolute chaos. Mm. Scouts by the gate spotted the advancement of a Void troop coming to the town, which caused panic. Elena quickly took charge and tried to calm the people down. Mm. Thinking on her feet, she asked for volunteers to help evacuate families from the city, and others to help set up barricades and defenses in town to slow down the Void advancement. Mm. Those who stayed to fight knew what the consequences would be, but Elena's unfaltering bravery rallied them. Together they found whatever they could to block off the streets and alleyways. That way, they could at least try to control where the fights happened. Nice. And then, Void entered the town. Not nice. That must be a blood buff. Leonard Grimaces. It wasn't pretty. These weren't trained soldiers, but still, they persevered for their town. Elena and a team of guards sought out the leader of Void, who was hidden in the back lines. Of they course he was. They passageways in the town to quickly reach him. Using her magic and training, she was a formidable match during the skirmish. And at one point, she even had the upper hand. I don't like where this is going. When the leader realized that he may be cut down, he cowardly tried to retreat. As the leaders of the armies would do. Or the leaders of the country, etc, etc. He cast a line of shadow fire between himself and Elena, which stretched across the road. It burned both any Void followers and townsmen alike who wow. were caught in the crossfire. What a piece of shit. She begins to speak in Aeve. But that did not stop Elena. She leaped through the dark flames and ran her sword straight through him. Hell yeah! What a badass! But so reckless! Ha 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 ha. Sometimes reckless equals badass. That's a fact. In this case especially. I would say that's badass, right? Boop. My mouth drops. But is so badass. Lena grins broadly, her eyes sparkling. It was, and a huge morale boost for anyone who witnessed it too. I can imagine she really jumped through the fire. I'm assuming that was the fatal blow that killed the leader. Liana nods. Unfortunately, shadow fire is far more deadly than regular fire. And it proved to be fatal. She sacrificed her life to save the people of her town. That's admirable. What happened then? With the Void Leader defeated, the rest of the followers broke down and either fled or surrendered. Thanks to Elena, this town wasn't taken over. You seem to know a lot about her. Lena brightens up again. Of course, she's such an inspiration. There aren't many mage knights who are women. While Elena may not have been one of the heroes so? of Asaria, who defeated and ended the conflict with Void, she still made just as big an impact to the people of this town. Is that so interesting? To me, Elena embodies what it means to be a mage knight. Being a student didn't stop her. She still did everything possible to protect those who needed it. Yeah, yeah. Is this why you became a mage knight? It's one of the reasons. Elena showed me that no deed is too small to make an impact on someone. As a mage knight, I get sent on missions all over Havengard. I feel like I can make more of a difference than if I were just a research mage. I don't know, maybe? On the other hand, they can research something good too, which will be like a huge thing, right? Uh. Never mind. Let's not compare. She grins. Plus, getting to travel around and meet new people isn't so bad. Hmm. How does your family feel about you traveling so much? While they don't think it's ideal, it's something they're already used to. Huh. Dude, I wish I had like. Maybe, uh, maybe I do. Maybe I don't. I'm not sure. But it would be nice to have a work which would allow you to travel a lot. Technically, I do. I mean, I could technically travel a lot and work, given I work remotely, but 
Hmm. But that would pretty much uh, churn away on all of the earnings, I guess. Uh, anyway. Oh, Liana knows. My older brother is also a mage knight. Oh! Oh, so you kind of followed in his footsteps. <laughs> I guess you could say that. Do you two get along? She thinks then not slowly. Yeah, we do actually. He must be really happy to hear you become a mage knight too. Um, why did the music stop when we asked that question? <laughs> Lena shifts her gaze away and smooths her skirt. When she looks back up, she seems too, cheer too cheerful. Well, that's a long enough break. I should go and help Kara with the search. Uh, I know she said we didn't have to, but investigating uh, is part of what I do. Uh, you switched topic. I'll meet you back at the end. That was a phase change, fast change in her demeanor. It must be something I said. Alright, I'll keep looking around too. She flashes me one last smile before quickly disappearing down the street. I guess I better get moving as well. With that done, I think about my next steps. Look for media, I bet Zaki's a Dean, because of course he is. Where else would he be? He's always at the inn, that guy. Uh, I'm not sure. Safe, safe, safe. Let's go uh, and uh, let's go find Kara. Freak it. Let's go find Kara, I think. Right? Outside? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yes, maybe I can help Kara with her search. I search the streets of the city, but seem to always miss her. I wonder where she is and what kind of people she's talking to. Ah oh, well, I'll see her when we meet back up. I guess I'll try something else. With that done, I think about my next stops. Kara, I wanted to hang out with you, damn it. Amelia. I wonder what Amelia is doing. Ah. I make a big loop around town, but don't find her anywhere. Racking my brain, I try to think of things that Amelia would be interested in. Magic. <laughs> Maybe a library or museum or something bookish. I make another lap around the town, but don't find those places. Well, I'm look. I'm making no progress, just wandering around. I better run return to the inn. I make my way back, and I'm surprised to see a familiar set of pigtails sitting quietly at one of the tables. Amelia looks up at me as I approach her. Greetings. Hey. She makes no indication to speak again. What are you doing here? I am awaiting the rest of our group at our designated meeting point. Right. But we still have a lot of time before the others are going to show up. She blinks. Yes, I'm well aware of that information. Don't you want to explore the town? No. Uh, I can't seem to stare at her, so she explains. I do not possess the contacts of Kara to pursue a lead on our next destination. Nor are there any familiar channels of leisure for me in the city. <sighs> the only option available is to reconvene with the rest of the group. Hence, I'm awaiting everyone's return. Again. <sighs> familiar channels of leisure. Is that her way of saying there's nothing fun here? There has to be something fun to do around here. She shakes her head. From my understanding, there is no library or museum. <laughs> I freaking... We freaking knew it! Fun is a broad term. That's not fun. I mean, I don't know, man. Muse some museums are cool. Are those the only places you've looked for? She nods. Fun could mean more than just that. Have you tried looking for some place with games or something? She cocks her head to the side and looks at me curiously. Uh, you know, like, uh, I paused to try to think what type of games would be in this world. Maybe stuff you'd find at a fair. Ring toss? Night throwing? Whack a mole? Amelia pauses. Perhaps you were describing a carnival. Yeah, that's it. I did not seek out that information, but I believe I may know the location of what you are seeking. Really? That's great! We should go! She pauses as she thinks, then gets to her feet. I suppose frequenting an establishment such as that could be considered a form of learning. 
Ah, uh, that's right. Let's go. <laughs> Amelia exits the inn and heads confidently out in the streets. I keep up as she turns onto the side streets, and before long, she passes in front of an open alley. It reminds you of the first and carnivals we have back home. People set up their stalls along the sides, but instead of selling wares, they advertise activities. There are stalls offering targets to test your skills, like weapons, throwing, or stalls which will guess your wave or age. Amelia glanced at me. Is this what you were suggesting? This is even better than I imagined. Which one do you want to check out? I am content to merely observe. No, 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 no. That's no fun. You should try one. She doesn't seem to be interested in choosing. I guess that means I'll just have to choose for her. Maybe you should go for something more engaging, like target throwing. Looking around at those tools, I don't recognize what half of these options are. There's something with floating circles and something else with bo bottles. I pause when I see the soul with these chargers. Finally, something I recognize. This shouldn't be too different from the shooting range wrists back home. Let's start shooting the chargers. Amida gives me a strange look. An interesting choice. Her tone suggests that this is not something she should try on her own, but she follows me to the stand anyway. The man behind the counter grins at us. Think you have what it takes to win? Hit three out of five shots to win a prize. <laughs> You're ready? Perhaps if you attempt it first, I can observe you and then attempt it myself. Are you trying to tell me a discharger is too difficult for you? Amelia shakes her head dismissively. Nonsense. Dischargers are merely a simple tool. I, on the other hand, have extensive magic training. This is nothing more than an exercise in coordination. I will hmm. attempt it. Guess maybe. That'll be two coins, miss. She plays the coins on the counter and he swaps it out with a discharger. There are five rounds loaded in there. Have at it. There are five rounds loaded in there. Have at it. Amelia catches the charger and holds it in front of her. She squints one eye as she lines up her aim. Then she squeezes the trigger. A bolt of energy shoots out of the barrel and Amelia lets out a small gasp at the kickback. The, shoot's the shot is white and she misses the target. Amelia's eyes are also white as she studies the charger with interest. How curious. Uh, have you ever shot one of these before? She shakes her head. The opposing force was unanticipated. This time I will be prepared. She lines up her aim and fires again. Anticipating the kickback, she finds to keep her aim straight, but can't stop the slight jerk of a weapon. Again, her shot misses. She frowns and seems surprised at herself, as if she can believe that she's continuing to miss. She fires again, but aims too high and misses, then fires once more and shots wide. For her final shot, she aims too low and misses again. Her face falls when she realizes that she's all out of shots. Good attempt. Everybody sucks the first time. Let her be. That's not too bad. For the first try, you were close to the target. Each time. Not good enough. Good try, miss. But unfortunately... Oh boy, she will, she's going to fall into it, huh? I'm the interrupt him by placing more coins on the counter. I would like another attempt. <laughs> I'm surprised by the determination in her voice. Oh boy, we are staying this, here until the night. As you wish. He takes the coins and resets the discharger with more rounds. Amelia fires again and again, but never quite hits the target. She throws down the charger and raises her bracelet. An unusual fire in her eyes. They begin to glow. Oh, yo, 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 hey, 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 what are you doing? I will hit the target. You've got to use the discharger. This discharger is clearly defective and not utilizing the energy properly. I will use my magic to prove it to you. I have no doubt in your skills casting magic, but shooting the charger is a new skill. You shouldn't give up. Amelia doesn't react. Are you really going to let a measly little charger get the best of you? The more you shoot it, the better your aim will be, and you'll be hitting the targets in no time. As she considers my words, her jaw unclenches and she lowers her arm. She picks up the discharger again with new resoluteness. As she lines up the shot, she takes her time before shooting. This time her shot is much closer to target. Amelia nods as if confirming something to herself. She shoots again and her shot is even closer to target. 
On her left throat, her face hardens and determination sets in. This time she painstakingly lines up her shot and steadies her grip. As she pulls the trigger, she uses her butt to help her keep steady from the kickback and her shot hits the target. Her eyes light up as she throws her arms in the air and hops up and down with excitement. I hit it! I hit it! Did you see? She turns to me with a big smile on her face as she jumps excitedly. Her big leaves bounce along with her and she claps her hands. Oh, so cute! Boop. Celebrate with her, why not? I jump up and down with her. You were awesome! She looks up at me with a huge grin. Suddenly her face turns red and she freezes. I see the moment of embarrassment on her face before she resumes her usual blank stare. It was only a matter of time before I got the correct calculations. <laughs> of course, of course. Anyway, I shall return in a moment. Of course, of course. She rushes off in a hurry towards the ladies' room, probably to recompose herself. I guess I'll wait here then. I'll wait here then. She still didn't win that prize for. Maybe I can win it for her. I I'll rest the shopkeeper. Hey, I'll give it a go. I've done my fair share of paint bowling back home. It should be somewhat similar. I place my coins on the table and the man hands me a discharger. The first round misses as I familiarize myself with the weapon. My second attempt hits the target as does my third. Unfortunately, my next attempt misses as I misjudge my aim. This is it. I set my aim and fire. Ahem, <clears throat> let's save. This is a hard choice. What am I supposed to do here? Probably miss or fail or hit! My aim is through and I hit the target. Yes, yes! I put down my charger and pump my, pump my fist in the air. The man grins. Nicely done. Well, here's your prize. Congratulations. He hands me a pink pango plushie. Thanks. Amelia turns and her eyes grow wide when she sees my plushie. How did you acquire this? Ah, uh, it's a prize from the game. She looks at me with surprise and seems impressed. You attempted the game? And you were successful? Yep. I see. <laughs> she eyes the discharger a poof again. I hold out the plushie. Ah, uh, yeah, this is for you. She blinks. But you weren't this. I, I have the real thing. <laughs> I already have a pongo, I don't need another one. I place the plush in her hands. Let's check out another store. Okay. I turn around begin walking, but not before I catch the small smile on Amelia's face as she hangs the plushie close to her. As we wander the stands, I think about Amelia and her mage caster program. So, I've been wondering. As a student at the Mage Academy, won't coming on this adventure with us affect your classes? Wait, no, no. She said she, like, completed the curriculum, didn't she? I think she did say that. That is not an issue for me, as I do not have classes. Yeah, what I said. You don't? She shakes her head. Uh, then what have you been working on? My research studies. A significant component to becoming a mage caster is research study. That is my focus and basis for participating on our travels. Okay. So you just have to document research of a subject area of your choice and you're done. To put it so plainly does a disservice to the amount of effort involved in formally achieving the status of mage caster. But ultimately, you are correct. I'm sorry. Sounds a bit like she's working on the equivalent of her dissertation. So if that's it, why haven't you done it already? It is not so simple. I had taken into consideration furthering the research on temporal rifts and the other parallel worlds. But such an endeavor would have been fruitless without an avenue for further research. Hmm. That explains her fascination with Elder Ilsum and Ember Mist. And then I came along. She smiles. Precisely. Uh, Loves to be your r r research of sorts. <laughs> Aren't you worried the Mage Academy will be come looking for you? After departing the Academy. I did ensure that a notification would reach my professors to inform them that I am currently traveling on a research study. These studies are quite numerous and common amidst my peers. Hmm. I see. Amelia poses in front of the stall. 
Shall we attempt this activity? Sure. What are we doing? We spent some more time trying on um, out the other stalls before we decide to leave. Amelia returns to the inn but decides to stay out a little longer. With that done, I think about my next steps. Huh, I'm ready to call it in. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I bet Zack is at the inn. Based on previous patterns, it shouldn't be difficult to figure out where Zack went. I make my way to the inn. To my surprise, Zack isn't standing in front of the bounty board. Instead, he sits alone at the table, nursing a tongue card. Looks like Zack's starting early. I'm sure if I join him, that will be my entire day. Screw it. Let's do it. I come back later. No thanks. I don't drink. I don't drink alone. Technically, I barely drank at the company event as well. I literally just drank one beer. Uh, I know. I, I I felt so out of place there. There were way way, way too many people there. To be honest. From to my liking. Small group, cool. Like, freaking two thirds of a company. Oh boy. Anyway, script, let's do it. I don't have anything else going. Let's get this party started. Zach looks me, uh, looks up at me, then returns his drink. Hang out, but don't drink. Have one or two drinks. Challenge Zach to a drinking match. Why not? Let's give it a shot. <clears throat> I grab myself a drink and join Zack at the table. He nods a greeting at me, which I return. Then I take a deep drink from my mug. Watching me, Zack takes a swig from his tongue card. I don't feel much like talking, and to no one's surprise, neither does Zack. I take another deep drink, which Zack matches, watching me closely. Huh, is that how it's going to be? As I close his mug, I throw back the rest of my drink and give him a challenging grin. He nonchalantly finishes off his drink too and returns my look. I signal for another round of drinks. When they arrive, I place one in front of me and the other in front of him. He considers me for a second, then accepts the drink. Zack cleans his head back as he nearly empties his mug. I race to finish before him, but he slams his tongue card down first. No bit, that's will be more of a challenge than I thought. But can you challenge? <sighs> Another round of drinks is ordered and we throw it back too. This time I chuck faster than he does and slam my tucker down victoriously. My face flashes like green wildly, but Zack pretends not to notice. Instead he just signals for more drinks. Oh boy, what have I done? My head begins to feel light as I chunk the next round. Zack's face is beginning to get flushed as I finish my drink first, he frowns. When the next order of drinks arrives, Zack chucks his drink in record time and flushes me white green as he slams down his mug. I honestly, I honestly don't understand like a competition like that. <laughs> How is that fun? It's not fun. Drinking in general is not fun, but oh no. and beer sucks. Ha! <sighs> Zack said, "I think for some reason that feels inexplicably funny. My thoughts are fizzy, thus I drink even more. They slip in and out of my mind." Zack been swaying in his seat as he finishes another drink. I put down my tankard a half second after he does. His words slur as he speaks. Your first mistake was to take on the mercenary of drinking. They don't call me the death slinger for nothing. Alright. I burst into laughter and have trouble catching my breath. Seriously, <laughs> death slinger. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing I've heard in my life. <laughs> Zack pursed his lips in a serious throw as he tries to hold back his laughter. But the more I laugh, the harder it is for him to resist until he is finally laughing with me. He pushes his hair away from his face and it sticks out at a weird angle. What should that hair style you? <laughs> Another fit of laughter drops. I try to bring my tongue to my lips, but miss and slash the beard on my shirt. Oh shit. <laughs> Zack doubles over in another wave of laughter. <laughs> you don't even know how to hold your mug prop. <laughs> Properly. Oh boy, he's... <laughs> oh boy, this is not gonna end well. It's like you're from another world or something. He grins and almost misses the table as he tries to lower his mug, still barely cohesive from the laughter. Shh! 
<laughs> it's a secret. I can slop, stop the giggles either. We're beginning to attract some stares from the other patrons. He stands. You don't even know what a discharger is. I know what a discharger is. Oh yeah? What is it? Shoot finger guns. A deadly weapon in my pants. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no. No, 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 no. A gun. Uh, it's a thing that you discharge, you know? I point my fingers as if they were guns to pretend to shoot. Pew 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 pew! <laughs> Zack mimics me and points his finger guns back at me. Pew pew! <laughs> he stumbles and falls back in his seat. Oh boy. <sighs> Zack and I spend the rest of the afternoon laughing and drinking. For once, he's animated, animated and expressive, completely different from what I used to. Time passes in a blur, but it certainly is fun. Hey, Zack. Before I can continue, I'm interrupted by a familiar voice. Oh, good. You're both here. Lena, Cara, and Amelia approach our table. Did you notice how dark it is outside? We talked to a guard and... She tears off mid-sentence when she notices the expressions on our faces. Zack wears a twisted grimace as he tries to emulate his stoic appearance. I glance at him and try to call back my laughter. <laughs> Zack leans in and whispers. Be cool. Maybe they won't notice. I look at Diana's concerned face and whisper back. I don't think they've noticed. Kara leans in and my eyes are immediately drawn to her. Seems like you guys have been spending your time wisely. Mm. Zark looks at Kara as if not seeing her for the first time. His queen's trying to keep her in focus. Kara raises an mm. the jiggle. Kara raises an eyebrow, then smiles. Yes. You look familiar. Very familiar. <laughs> she blinks in price, then smirks playfully. I do? Like who? Oh, like this one girl I met recently. <laughs> we actually started adventuring <laughs> together. Kara grins. Oh yeah? Tell me more about her. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Zack wraps his chin thinking, is this guy playing dumb or actually clueless? What can I say? She's resourceful. Friendly, knows all sorts of history stuff. Kara blushes but does interrupt as, she co as he continues listing of more trades. Oh, and she's fit. Very, very fit. Mm. He wears an impish grin and leans in as if sharing a secret. And apparently, quite limber. <laughs> Kara hides a laugh, clearly amused. Is that so? Zack nods. I wonder what she would think if you told her all of this. Mm. Zack's eyes widen. That would be too weird. <laughs> I don't know. I bet she would like it. I'm going to tell her if you don't. Like hell you are! <laughs> Zack lunges, trying to punch him, but he swings wide and ends up stumbling. We both look at each other and start laughing. Amelia turns to Liana and Kara. Evidently, these two are in no state to assist us in our investigation. I stop laughing and try to give them a serious face. I am in the greatest state. And what state is that? Drunk. <laughs> the sexy state of New York. Not a case you state, but a solid. Okay, the last option is out of the question. <laughs> Oh boy, this is so good. Um, the sexy state of I don't know the state of New York because we've got the fine lady Liberty. I wobble on my feet as I stand for impulses. Liana helps steady me. I glance over at her and pause as I take in how attractive she is. I grin, but not as fine as you. 
Leona is taken back, then blushes. She looks away dismissively. All right, I think it might be time for you two to call it a night. Uh, it's like white you out. I'm still good. Kara swoops over and firmly pulls Zack back to his feet. Let's get you back to your room then, okay? He stares at Kara. You know, on second thought, I think I'm ready to go back. Looking amused, she glances back at me. Are you coming? I am now. <laughs> Kara leads us upstairs and drops us off in our rooms. She stands by the door as we stumble towards the bed. Sweet dreams. Hopefully filled with that limber adventuring girl. Mm. Oh, I wish I could. I wish they said that to me. She winks at Zack as she closes the door behind her. As soon as I see my bed, I can't think of anything more inviting and gratefully fall into it. Zack does the same in his bed, and it's not long before the two of us pass out. And also, it's not long before uh, we will end the episode. That was interesting. And quite good. We learned a little bit about Liana again. Like, her, that her brother is in the same profession. Uh, we spent some time with Amelia. We won some prizes at the... Like, carnival games, despite it not being a carnival. And we got wasted. <laughs> well, Zack pretty much confessed his feelings there, let's face it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I would too. <laughs> oh boy. No, in general, I really enjoyed this game. I'm just sad there is no option to, uh, like... Have romance path with other characters, just lo just one of them. And again, have like an various outcomes of that, right? But, well, can't do anything about it. I still enjoy the game, so, you know, it's not really much of a complaint here. Anywho, let's end it. Hope you guys enjoyed, and not guys. Uh, you can like the video if you did, that'd be appreciated. Uh, are you guys in and not guys into drinking beer at all? Or alcohol in general? I'm not, to be fair. Why? Alone, you will never see... Well, of course, you will not never see me drinking alone, because... I would be alone, but I, in general, I never drink alone at all. I like going to a bar to drink something. It would be okay that way. Otherwise, not a fun at all of that. So yeah. Subscribe if you haven't already. We are after that 2000 mark as well, uh, which is going very, very slowly. Hopefully, uh, you can help out with this. And what's next? What's next? Twitter, Instagram and Twitch, I guess. You can go there if you want. If you want. And that's about it. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a wonderful day. And, you know, join me tomorrow in the next episode. Bye-bye.